the video really begins, I wanted to let you know I'm splitting it into three parts. The first part is my tips for planning a natural hamster cage. The second part is things to use. And the third part is setting up a natural hamster cage. So I hope you guys enjoy. So one of the best tips I can give you is to get inspiration. Honestly, I feel like this might be kind of underrated, but it has helped me so much when I set up my hamster cages. Not only am I more excited, but I also have so many more ideas as to what I can do. And you don't only have to look at hamster cages for inspiration. You can look at reptile enclosures, for example. This is something that I absolutely love to do. I know that reptiles and hamsters generally have very different needs, and I also know that they generally come from very different areas, but you can look at the way that cork is laid out or greenery is included into the enclosure. And can we just talk about how pretty some of these enclosures are? I think they're so beautiful. There are also Instagram accounts that post only pictures of hamster cages. I have one myself, but there are other great ones out there, and I'll leave some links down below. And finally, looking at where hamsters come from is such a great source of inspiration. I know I say this a lot, but don't only look in the hamster section of pet stores. The bird sections are great for things like oat sprays, wheat sprays, millet, flax, all that sort of stuff. I know in some areas it's a little bit more difficult to get certain items, but you can always look online and try and find things there. They also make the cages look really nice. They're great for foraging for hamsters, which is a very natural and important thing for them to be able to do. And I'm going to show you an example later of how much they can actually change how a cage looks. The aquarium section is great for things like rocks. Now I know that you can find rocks outside and sanitize them, but I always struggle to find really nice big rocks, which is why I bought a couple from the aquarium section and I absolutely love them. And of course we can't forget about the reptile sections. If you followed my account for a while, you might know just how much I love cork tunnels. I think they're so great because not only do they come in so many different shapes and sizes, but they also make the cages look really natural while also having great textures that are really natural. So when a hamster walks over it, it's not like they're walking over plastic or something. By the way, plastic shouldn't really be in a hamster cage. Grapevine pieces from the reptile section are also fantastic for hamster cages. Just make sure that these heavier items are either on the base of the cage or on a platform or something with stilts so that if a hamster burrows, so that when your hamster burrows underneath, the heavy item won't squish your hamster. And things like dried flowers, like for example, these dried rose petals or dried herbs are absolutely amazing for hamster cages. Now I know that in some countries these are more difficult to find. In Europe you can look on websites like Zooplus or Roadie Pet, and if you live in the US you could order from Viovet, but I have heard that some people were able to find dried herbs in stores. If you live in North America and you have found dried herbs, it would be really helpful if you could comment down below where you got them so that other people could find them too. Using twigs from outside is also fantastic. Just make sure that the tree hasn't been sprayed with anything and that the wood is safe. You can also use things like dried moss or dried leaves in your hamster cages. Now I know that dried leaves are a little bit more difficult to find in some places, but I would recommend checking out Mixorama if you live in Europe. They only ship to a few countries, but it's still definitely worth a look at. Now about that example I was talking about earlier. Here's a picture of my cage without any sort of sprays, herbs, or leaves, and here's after. You can really tell that there is a big difference. Adding different textures is great because it looks really nice, but it also gives your hamster something to do. I find a lot of my hamsters enjoy digging in this sort of substrate. It also gives some texture to the cages, but I will talk about that in the next section. Something that I personally find very important in natural hamster cages is variety. I think it makes the cages look a lot better and I personally try my best to have a variety of different colors, heights, and textures in my cages. 
Recently, I don't really feel like my cages have had that much variety, which is why I don't really like them as much. There's so much variety in nature, so incorporating that into your hamster's cage is a really great thing to do.